Hi, Teresa again. Welcome back to Energetic Protection Part 2. In the last video, I talked to you about your chakras and how they work and how you can tune them yourself. Today, I wanted to introduce you to more information about your aura and how your aura works. Your aura is the bioelectromagnetic field that's around your body. This vibrational field contains both electric and magnetic impulses, and this is how we send and receive energy. Every living thing has an auric field around it. Your aura is a containment field for your chakra systems. And a fun way to think about this is your aura is like Tupperware for your chakras. It helps keep your chakras fresh. When your chakras are aligned and balanced, your aura gives off a beautiful, bright glow. When your chakras are out of balance or closed, your aura can appear dim or weak. Not only does your aura contain your energy centers, but it's actually many layered and is basically the essence of you. And in my personal opinion, I feel like our soul is inside our aura. It's sort of surrounding us. And a lot of times, you know, when I was younger, I obviously thought that the soul was sort of contained within the body. But now after learning so much about the energetic field, it's clear to me that our soul is in our aura and it's surrounding our body. It is the life force energy. So in a very real sense, your aura is you. Here's some cool facts about your aura. Just like your chakra centers, your aura can expand and contract. And this generally happens depending on how safe you feel. So you've heard of fight or flight, right? In fight or flight, our sympathetic nervous system is activated, alerting us to danger and makes us feel as if we have to stop and fight something or run the heck away from it. When you go into fight or flight, your aura contracts as close to your body as possible. And this makes sense because with fight or flight, we're thinking about the chances of us being attacked. You can also be attacked on a psychic level and you intrinsically know this, which is why you pull your aura in. When you are feeling safe, secure, and relaxed, your aura naturally expands and can radiate as far as you can imagine it to go. Your aura works a lot like a Wi-Fi signal. So you know when you have a really strong Wi-Fi sim signal, you are very receptive. You can pick up those uh, electromagnetic currents that come into your phone or device. It's the same with your aura. When your aura is strong and expanded, you pick up intuitive information quite easily. And just like with a weak Wi-Fi signal, if your aura is contracted or weak, you can't pick up that much psychic information, which is why you can't ac access your own psychic ability when you're in a state of fight or flight. Your aura acts as a mood ring. The color of your aura will change depending on your mood and what's going on, depending on what centers are open and shining bright and which ones are closed, or where you're putting most of your energy and attention. For example, if you were studying or concentrating really hard, there's a good chance you would see a lot of yellow in your aura as that is connected to mental energy and studying. Your aura is limitless. It can expand as far as you can imagine. So if your imagination has no limits, your aura has no limits. And as I stated before, you can see the colors in your aura if you use something called Curlin photography. And in this style of photography, the photographer is able to capture the aura around the body and you'd be able to see all the colors within your aura at that moment. You're not the only one that has an aura. In fact, humans are not the only beings that have auras. Animals have auras, plants have auras. Anything living and organic gives off an aura. Planets have auras, stars have auras, and I could keep going. They all have an aura. We can also share our auric field with others. And we naturally do this when we are taking care of other people. 
um, such as um, mothers with children or taking care of someone who isn't feeling well, many times how we help each other is through sharing our own auric field. That's the great news. The bad news is if we are not keeping up with our own spiritual hygiene and checking in on our aura and making sure it's balanced, other people can leech off our aura and oftentimes we refer to that as psychic attack. So now I'd like to get into sharing with you some ways that you can practice spiritual hygiene and protecting your own energy. And I'd like to make a note before I do this. First of all, no one, and I mean no one, knows what's best for you other than you. You are the sovereign authority in your own life. So if you have a way that you are working with energetic protection or spiritual hygiene and it's working for you, that is awesome. Great job. Seriously, good work and keep doing it. Having said that, I love to encourage you to play. Try something new. Try one of these techniques because you never know what might really work for you unless you give it a shot. So the techniques I'm about to introduce, they're not hard, fast rules. And I have created them in sort of a light protection situation all the way up to, oh my gosh, I need serious, strong boundaries here situation. So I hope you enjoy and try all the practices I'm about to introduce to you now. I'm sure you're wondering why haven't I mentioned negative entities, um, I have talked about psychic attack, but I haven't mentioned like negative frequencies or demonic frequencies. Why haven't I done that? Is it because I don't believe that those ex that exist? The short answer is yes, I believe those exist, but I don't give them more power than I have. And I'd like you to approach it in the same way if that resonates for you. Because here's the basic truth. Energy is energy. It doesn't matter if you're a physical being or a non-physical being. Our energy is the same. And beings kind of operate generally the same, whether they're physicalized or non-physicalized. That means a kind, loving person in the physical form would have an energy equivalent of kind, loving energy. And a sort of mean, spirited, nasty person in physical form would also represent sort of a mean, nasty energy and it and the so when you see it that way when you sort of humanize it for yourself for a moment it can be really intense to perceive non-physical energies as somehow greater than you but then you would be falling into an ego trap of thinking that there is a hierarchy of superiority right that a, a non-physical entity whether it's good or bad is somehow more powerful than you and the truth is we are all one we are all connected to the very same source. And so what is invested in you is invested in all energy, meaning you're just as powerful as that which you perceive around you. It just comes down to do you perceive your own power? And when you start to perceive your own power and you're not giving it away to an entity, whether it's a positive one or a negative one, then you recognize that if you have power and just as much as they have, then what you're doing is just as effective as what they're doing. So I want us to learn how to not over tip the scales in the favor of one being over another. It's all energy and energy understands certain principles. And the first principle that we're gonna talk about is boundaries. It, it works in the non-physical world just as much as it works in the physical world. So the very first energetic protection idea I want you to focus on is boundaries. What will you allow and what will you say no bueno to? Because there will always be those who wish to manipulate you and take advantage of you. Just as much, there will always be those who wish to help and support you. You've got to be clear in yourself about what you will put up with. For example, this is one energetic boundary I practice every time I work in a session with either myself or other people. I state who can come into my energetic field and who can't. So for example, I will call in the highest frequencies of benevolent love and light. That's who I want to connect with and talk to. And I will then state that anything less 
then the highest frequencies of benevolent love and light are not invited, not accepted, and not allowed. Therefore, I've just put up an energetic boundary saying, here's who's invited to my party and here's who's not. Many times when we're working in energy and we're trying to maybe contact energe energetics on the other side, we unintentionally leave the door open. It's kind of like you through a party and you're like, hey, spirit team, hey, angels, come on over to my party. And you open the door, but you don't state on the invitation that this is invite only and anybody who's not an angel or part of my spirit teams is kindly not invited, right? So we need to do, we actually need to do that because those who wish to manipulate or work around our free will, either physically or non-physically, will look for loopholes right so even though you didn't directly invite them they'll be they would um look for the workaround and say well you didn't say we couldn't come so the first thing i'd like you to practice is energetic boundaries this is the basis of spiritual hygiene you start practicing that and you'll notice you'll have less and less occurrences of troublesome energy affecting you and the beautiful thing about setting boundaries is if you become very crystal clear that you're not trying to control the behavior of another, whether physical or non-physical, because you can't, but you can stand in your power and state what you will allow and what you won't allow. In the next video, I'm going to be teaching you six different methods for creating energetic protection and strong spiritual hygiene. I can't wait to share these with you and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.